Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our mental health um, week. So a lot of you, um, as you have signed up for this course, you're thinking, okay, so the series is back to basics, right? So obviously with the new year, we're just going to start off with physical health. Not true. Today, we're actually going to discuss mental health. So grab something to drink. We won't take um, too much of your evening. Via here, I like to have something kind of bubbly and less additive and sugary to sip on and while I'm doing my work in the evening. And so just grab whatever you can and join me. I want this to be a relaxing conversation that won't take up too much of your time. Um, each of these videos that I do this week, I'm going to kind of separate things out because I want to keep things basic easy to absorb, easy to implement, and also um, kind of just instead of throwing a bunch of information at you all at once, I want to kind of segment things out. Uh, it's better for you to learn, maybe grasp, maybe it won't be as intimidating for those who are just starting off as well, um, just to kind of take some of the basics and learn a little bit by little bit. Or if you're a veteran and you've been in health and wellness for a while, it's always good to kind of take the time to learn what we need to learn and gather the data and the information that we need to learn in a way that will be best absorbed and that you will actually utilize. So without further ado, excuse me, um, I'm going to just kind of give you a couple things here. So mental health, according to the CDC and the NIH, which is the National Institute for Health, um, mental health includes emotional health, physiological health, and social well-being. Now, for um, this, our purposes for this um, series, I actually broke this up a little bit more, kind of unpacked it, and so we're doing a mental health and then a social well-being one a separate. I think that it's kind of good to unpack those separately. Just yes, one affects the other, but it's good to talk about the differences and the things why it relates and kind of dig a little bit deeper into that one as well. Um, so mental health, as I'm sure you all are, are all aware, is dominated in the research, especially in the past five years. Um, everybody is now kind of familiar with whether it's postpartum, hi Catherine, whether it's postpartum anxiety, depression, or maybe it is um, change of life, phases of life. People have been saying that one a lot recently. It's, you know, as you your cha life changes and those different phases occur, usually we have some sort of stress response or some sort of anxiety response. And that's completely true. Um, whenever, if you think back into the good old days or back in the day, whenever people had different things going on, they still had those same stress response. So this is not a new thing. It's just, you know, we're learning more about it and we're able to tackle it in a more educated way. And so whenever we talk about mental health, you know, we're talking about stress disorders, but maybe bipolar disorders for um, some people, eating disorders, anxiety, generalized anxiety disorders, um, depression. There's so many different ones that we could unpack and talk about here. Um, but instead of talking about conditions and things of that nature, I actually want to focus on um, just aspects of mental health and well-being, um, the emotional aspects and also, you know, the mental health aspects of our everyday being that affect all the different dimensions of health, specifically as we're looking back to basics on what we can do and what is, um, I don't know, attainable for every single one of us. Um, that way we don't have to be, you know, scholars in every single uh, mental health concern. However, we do need to have awareness of our own emotional state and know how to address things if uh, factors enter our lives. So whenever, you know, whenever we're thinking about maybe different emotional or mental health concerns or um, things that might arise, we might think about, you know, stress level. We might think about lasting sadness. We might think about, um, Whenever we have extreme reactions to just minor, minor events, you know, what's going on emotionally backing that, maybe we become more emotionally withdrawn or, you know, just kind of secluded inward just because we're so overwhelmed 
um, that the thought of going out or having any sort of interaction socially, see how they interrelate so socially or even with um, just outside of our own special space, with us, whether that's our room, our living room, our kitchen. Um, so, and so you have to also think about dramatic changes in sleeping, eating, um, because I know, you know, a common thing to do is to binge eat whenever things are out of our control or to withhold food whenever things are out of control. And so as we kind of look at these pieces, we also want to think about the macro, like the little bitty, like you have the, um, the macro level where things are, you know, lasting, maybe they last more than six weeks. So, you know, we're thinking about depression, things of that nature. I want to bring you back, back to the micro things. So whenever we have episodes of stress that, you know, have popped up for the past couple of days and we're just like, oh my goodness, I'm so overwhelmed, um, things of that nature. What can we do at that ma micro scale that will affect the macro? So we go back to the basics whenever um, things are happening. That way they never um, have the chance to kind of develop and build. So why is it so important that we talk about this first? And I'm looking at my notes here just so that I make sure that I hit all my talking points. Um, the brain guides the body and the body uh, guides the brain. So as we kind of start to build on, you know, the different aspects of health, whether it's a physical health or environmental health, financial health, things of that nature, we want to make sure that we understand the relationship between our brain and our body because one is dependent on the, on the other and vice versa. Um, so every time, you know, it, it's stress and its effects. It's, it's a real thing. So the things that happen in our mind will affect our body. And how you manage your mental health now can really, really prevent and um, almost deflate or, you know, decrease the effect and probabilities of future occurrences of this happening. And also if you have the tools and the knowledge and the game plan, like we're going to talk about here in a bit, um, probably tomorrow, um, having that game plan and having that kind of things that you can fall back on is another tool that you can use. So, like I said, if you have, you know, the knowledge about whenever this is occurring, you can kind of go forward from there and be like, okay, I, I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed, maybe I feel like I'm about to have an anxiety attack or something of that nature. What are the things that I know that I can do um, to help improve this time of my life and not uh, have me reach another level of maybe concern or anxiety or proceed to that panic attack? Um, I can speak from experience. I've had severe panic attacks before, and they're kind of terrifying. They're just uh, something that I don't wish on anybody, but I know it's very, very common, especially in today's society. And whenever we also begin to talk about physical health, some of us, you know, we kind of want to take things to the extreme and not eat anything or um, decrease all of our fats or all of our proteins or all of our carbs because they're terrible. Oh, my goodness. No, we want to back that off. We want to think about, you know, the balance in life and um, reduce that anxiety, reduce that stress, reduce that fear, that emotional response that we have with certain aspects of our lives. So um, as we get back to the basics and basic solutions that we can use, um, you can either pause this video now and maybe you can come back to it tomorrow about the solutions, or if you want to stay and hang out with me a little bit longer, please do. Um, and I'll try to also make an infograph and things of that nature, easy visual site for you guys to use as well. So let's see here. This is not a full list of things that you can do. These are just my ideas given to you to kind of spark some interest. And so if you have something that you like to do to kind of calm you or um, whenever you are having, you know, those moments of, okay, I need to go back to me, back to my center, um, whatever you call it, and you have something that works great for you, please share because it might help somebody else um, with their strategies to go back to their basics whenever they are having a stressful um, anxious or um, emotional time in their lives. So my first one is breathing practice, meditation. Um, 
we're all aware of, yeah, we breathe every day. Um, we're all aware of probably the benefits of meditation, which include, you know, a whole, whole slew of physical um, improvements and health improvements that come from meditating. However, here's my thing. How many of us are actually having a breathing practice or a meditative meditation practice every day? Or how many of us actually, whenever we are having a stressful moment, the first thing that we think of is to take some nice, nice deep breaths in and out or to take some nice moments for ourselves. Um, studies are showing now more and more, I keep on reading more and more about how, you know, um, breathing affects the vagal nerve and the vagal tone, which is the nerve that actually runs all the way down into our organs and uh, how breathing can actually help to downregulate whenever that vagus nerve is just overstimulated, which happens whenever we are having a, um, hyper awareness or hyper emotional state or stress or depression, things of that nature. So kind of bringing it back to, oh yeah, maybe take a couple deep breaths. Again, these are basic things. Um, therapy. So some of us, you know, I, I am a big advocate of therapy. I've actually gone to counseling myself and it, whenever I had stressful times in my life. Um, I was in grad school, had a baby. We flip-flopped on jobs and a bunch of different things were going on uh, right in the beginning of our marriage. And I really benefited from going to counseling. And I know so many people who have gone to counseling during, you know, an emotional or stressful time and they concur. It was, it's the best thing that they could do for themselves. So if that is available to you, I encourage you to do it. Even if it's a maintenance thing or something that you go to, um, just to check in with yourself to kind of proactively, um, go back to your basics and remind yourself that, you know, you're worthy of, uh, attention and being able to have that dialogue and have that space and uh, that safe space. So I encourage you guys, um, to check that out because it really did help me as well. Um, get outside. The power of sunlight, the power of fresh air, green, just a, that's, it's a good thing. It is a, um, not only, you know, is a movement, which is again, physical health. It might be a little bit social too, if you get out and about, um, but getting outside is almost, it's a natural reset. Because whenever we go outside, even if it's kind of gray and gloomy, we still, there's different air. There's different energy outside. And that is big. Getting that different air, getting that different energy from the outside is just changing. It's, it's changing to your physical being and anything else that you would like to layer on top of that. And we'll dive more into that later. Um, if you do have, you know anxiety or depression or um, stressful situations do arise, have a plan. Have, you know, four, three, four or five things written down or two things written down that you're like, every time that I'm in this space or I, ha I know that, or maybe you don't know if something happens, that you can go back to. Um, so a couple more here is tea. Tea is calming. A nice warm cup of tea it usually can help to down re regulate your system and your nervous system, that fight or flight, it really does help to down re regulate that system and bring you back to a nice calm state. Um, it's, it, it's something so simple, but it's so effective. Just sipping that nice cool, a warm cup of tea, maybe an herbal tea, it's warming to the soul. And if you go back to, you know, maybe Western, Eastern religion, kind of um, mixing the two, going into, you know, your chakra systems or things of that nature, your chi. A chi is al always referenced for that. Writing things down, journaling. So while we're writing our, um, our plan and we're referring back to that, maybe writing down your thoughts, your feelings, um, that, that's therapy right there, getting those words on paper. And then lastly, eating health, stress, helping foods. So whenever we're thinking about um, foods that actually improve your stress management, you're thinking walnuts, dark chocolate, hello, blueberries, avocado, 
fatty fish and oranges. So let's unpack that a little bit more. So we're thinking walnuts and fatty fishes just because of those omega um, vitamins that come out, uh, come with that. So those components of the foods really, really help to calm us. But also back in the kind of the back seat, we're thinking about hormonally how it's kind of helping us there too. It's also great for healing. So if you're postpartum, um, this is a great uh, way to help you heal because you need those good fatty acids to help you heal. Um, so same with avocados. Avocado is another good one too. Um, so dark chocolate. Dark chocolate has some beautiful antioxidants and so much more that actually do help us whenever we are super stressed out. There's a reason, and I'm doing a workshop in February in Owasso about, you know, harnessing our superpowers as women during our cycles. You know, we crave different things, and one of those things sometimes is chocolate. And there's a reason for that, just due to the properties in the chocolate. Um, blueberries, they are fantastic, not only for sight and eyes, but also for combating stress and kind of um, assisting with that process and those pathways. Same thing with oranges. They're high in vitamin C, so it really helps with that, too. Um, now, you're probably thinking, oh, those six or seven things, oh, I, I've heard that. I've, I've seen it in every single um, healthy magazine or healthy article about stress management. Or, oh, yeah, I think there was a study published on that the other day, if you're keeping up with your science journals. And you're totally right. These are things that we hear all the time, or some of us do. Maybe some of us kind of just brush them off. We're like, yeah, there's that thing. Or some of us are like, oh yeah, I know that. And then we never do it. So how many of us are kind of brushing off these basics and forgetting that those are some of the foundational things that keep us healthy and happy? So and one thing that I want to challenge here as well, we might brush off those basic things and yet we want to go see the newest and flashiest thing like the newest app or journal or gadget that can help us improve our mental health and yet we still the basics we're like ah oh, no I don't want to do that so my challenge for you this week is to start incorporating some of the basics into your very life um things like getting outside Maybe eating some of these foods that are listed, and that'll make um, a list of for you later. Um, maybe start writing a journal. If that's too much time, maybe use the voice to text feature on your phone. Send yourself an email, something of that nature. Getting those words out is just, it's, it's very healing for the, your emotional state. So those are some basic things that I wanted to share with you today. Um, this is a longer video than I kind of intended. Uh, I was going to break these guys up, but I think I'll do that again. Um, just kind of revisiting these things throughout the week. Because repetition is the mother of habit. And um, we need to, again, kind of incorporate these things into our lives as we go through this week. I'm going to be trying to uh, incorporate specifically the tea. I, it's simple, but it kind of helps me. I want to hear what helps you. You know, my, my list was super short. What are some things that help you? Um, I like going for walks. That really helps me, especially at a long day at work. Or um, sitting on my couch with a buttload of pillows and blankets on top of me because that just makes me feel safe and warm. Uh, what, what helps you? I would love to hear from you, learn from you as well. And we'll begin to unpack this more throughout the week. Thanks for joining me on this chat. I know it's kind of long. Thanks for hanging in there. And let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think about these basics. And feel free to share on this post or create a new post in the group because that's what this group is for. Maybe write down some thoughts here as well. All right, you guys. Have a fantastic Monday night, and I will chat with you tomorrow. See you.